So we had just gotten dumped at the altar by a Reese, um, and after having a catastrophic party <laughs> turned into a non-party, uh, we drove back to Copenhagen, and we kind of had to figure out. So you know, what are we gonna do now? Um, and the thing is that you gotta ask for help sometimes. And for us, it was really natural to ask for help from the mentors that we had had in their incubator program, because obviously they were still following us pretty closely, and we had told them. That we're gonna go with this investment. And I remember picking up the phone and my first call was Lila, um, Chris and Lila from Singularity University. And I was so nervous to tell them that the investment hadn't gone through. And they were just like, oh, well, does that mean there's, there's cash, there's room for cash from us? And I was like, what? So I'm calling what, and what I think is perhaps the most embarrassing phone call of my entire life turns out to be, well, um, if you're looking for alternative sources of cash, you know, we could be interested. Um, and that happened a lot. So when we called um, Eric, our advisor and lawyer, and Jens Peter um, was one of our advisors as well, all of them said, well, we're also actively angel investors and we've been following your company very closely. We've been working together for six months. We know that you work hard. We know you deliver on time. We know you have all your research. We know you already have a big user group. You are not at the stage where everyone else is at. And because we know how you work, we trust you. And we know this is gonna be a really good investment. So almost in a matter of a couple of hours, we realized that we could actually turn the situation around. And it took about 14 days to figure out the paperwork, how we would structure the investment and how we would create this angel syndicate who would come up with almost the same amount of money as the VC had intended uh, to invest. But the key difference was that it would be on a convertible note and that the investment um, wouldn't have a fixed valuation, which was better for us because it allowed us to grow um, over that, those two years until the final determination of the investment. And I think with that, we began to realize the power of a community and the power of always delivering what you say you're gonna deliver because it in many ways became our brand to always operate in, with this excellence. And I think if I look back at those early days before we locked in the first investment and you know, with that there comes this whole new journey of professionalization. I think the one thing that's, that's always been true is that regardless of what happened, I always knew that we were gonna make it. Like I never went to bed a single time doubting that we would build something that would last. And I think it ties back to the strong sense of purpose and product. So all in the beginning when they're saying, you know, do they know what they're doing? Are they just likable? All the time where I felt this VC was trying to cheat us. We were so true to what we were trying to build that it gave us this strength that when facing what could potentially have been our biggest defeat, we kind of just like picked ourselves up and acted like adults do. And that's that robustness you have with a different age. So when you come into entrepreneurship, being a little bit older, you've had a lot of other failures in your life. So we knew we just got to put in some more work. So trust yourself, get help from others and stay true to your idea and your values.